Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it looks, it seems that the last month or so we've been commemorating a lot of historic milestones. On the 1st of June, uh, we celebrated 50 years of that church building. So that was 1st of June 1969. Uh, a few days later, the 6th of June, we commemorated the 75th anniversary of the landings in Northern Europe on D-Day. Um, just last week, we commemorated uh, 50 years of man landing on the moon. And uh, on the 2nd of June, we commemorated the six decades of our branch's existence. So I thought tonight I'd share a bit of the history of our branch and the Knights in general. <coughs> So here goes. So a century ago, the Knights of the Southern Cross were formed by a group of Catholic laymen with the full support of the bishops of Australia to combat the anti-Catholic discrimination that was pervasive throughout Australian society at the time. It was not uncommon for job advertisements on shop fronts and newspapers to feature the qualifier, Irish need not apply. An overt act of discrimination against Catholics who were a predominantly Irish background at the time. Australian society, much like the rest of the English-speaking nations of the Anglosphere, <coughs> were dominated by Protestants, many with free Masonic associations, and were thus particularly hostile to Catholics. It was under this toxic envir uh, uh, environment for Catholics back in 1882 that forced an American priest of Irish background, the Venerable Father Michael Joseph McGivney, to organise a group of devoted Catholic men in New Haven, Connecticut, into a fraternal organisation which would defend Catholic values while ensuring that them and their families would receive mutual support from one another. This would be the foundation of the Knights of Columbus, who today have nearly two million members worldwide, primarily in North America. Following the end of the First World War, many Catholics found themselves discriminated by the wider society at large, in, par in part because of the mistrust towards Irish Catholics from the Anglo-Saxon Protestants, as they had been the biggest voice against conscription during the war led by the great Archbishop of Melbourne, the Most Reverend Daniel Mannix. Thus, many saw a need for an organisation similar to the Knights of Columbus here in Australia. In Melbourne, a young businessman, Michael Chamberlain, who would later be knighted and become the first Deputy Chancellor of Monash University, sought to organise like-minded men in a group akin to the Knights of Columbus. Thus, in December 1917, the Knights of St Francis Xavier were formed. In Sydney, two men, Patrick Joseph Minahan, a New South Wales parliamentarian, and Joseph Patrick Lynch, a secondary school teacher, formed what would become the Knights of the Southern Cross in August 1919. It was while we were in Sydney a couple of months back, uh, myself, Carmen and Michael, for the KSC National Conference and Centenary Celebrations, uh, we were privileged to attend the final resting places of both those men, Patrick Minahan and Joseph Lynch. It was humbling to be in the presence of those who founded our order a century earlier. Eventually, those two organisations began to work together with an eventual amalgamation, and thus the Victorian organisation assuming the KSC name in March of 1922, which is the official beginning of the KSC in Victoria. <coughs> These brave Catholic men, dedicated to the faith, support each other economically and provide mutual support for themselves and their families as needed, along with defending the doctrines of the Catholic faith. The Order's presence was first established in the Dandenong area with the chartering of the 59th Victorian branch, Dandenong branch, on February the 8th, 1950, based at St Mary's Dandenong, the mother church of all the parishes in the region. When the new parish of St Gerard Magella Dandenong North was formed as a parish in its own right in, 19, in January 1956, Dandenong branch would continue to service that new parish as well, with some of its new parishioners as members. With the growth of this new parish, in Dandenong North, head office decided a new branch it was needed to service its needs. The task to form this new branch was given to parishioner and knight Dan Green, who with known other St Gerard's based knights would charter this new branch, the 128th branch to be formed in Victoria on June 2nd 1959, originally as Dandenong number two branch. Green, also active within St Vincent de Paul, would be installed as the branch's inaugural worthy knight, which is now branch chairman. Green, along with fellow branch members Merv Knight, Tom Gomez and Tom Carroll, were also foundation members of St Vincent de Paul Society at St Gerrard's, and as well as their normal St Vincent de Paul duties, commenced the piety store which is still operating today. 
Since it's chartering, Dandenong North Branch, as it would subsequently be renamed in 1979, has been heavily involved in the life of St Gerard's Parish. In many ways, both entities have sustained and supported each other over the past six decades, and the branch has had the full support of its parish priests, beginning with Father Henry Gilman, Father John Hardy, Father John Daly, whose nephew Neil is an apology tonight, but is the secretary of Oakley Branch, Father Heinen, Father, uh, Father Joseph Heinen, Father Will Mancoy, Father Roger Ryan, and of course, Father Brendan Arthur. In the early days, branch members formed the Guard of Honour for Archbishop Daniel Mannix when he blessed and opened the St. Gerard's Church, and were asked by inaugural parish priest, Father Henry Gilman, to assist with the Easter ceremonies. This assistance still continues six decades on, with knights acting as canopy bearers for the Eucharistic procession. They would also assist as ushers for Archbishop Mannix's funeral, <coughs> and ushers for special masses at St. Patrick's Cathedral, such as for major funerals and priestly and episcopal ordinations. As new parishes were formed in the area, mainly St. Elizabeth's Noble Park North and St. Paul Apostle Endeavour Hills, the branch would take on members from these parishes, where they would also be supported by the parish priests, such as Father Tatius Zielkowski at St. Elizabeth's and the late Father Tim O'Toole at St. Paul Apostle. Other nearby parishes within a dedicated branch, such as St Kevin's in Hampton Park, would have its parishioners welcomed by Dandenong North Branch. With the recession of nearby branches in Springvale and Dandenong, many of those members would also seek refuge at Dandenong North. Throughout the years, Dandenong North Branch and its members would assist in all aspects of parish life within these parishes. Such activities would include taking up collections, working on counting teams, attending to ushering and car parking duties for Christmas and Easter and other major masses, bearing the canopy for Eucharistic processions, providing manpower for parish priests at short notice, conducting working bees, church cleaning, and running letter writing campaigns, stewardship campaigns, and public speaking courses. Later years have seen Dandenong North Branch participate in a monthly soup band drive out of St. Paul Apostle Endeavour Hills for St. Vincent de Paul, providing food and essential essentials to the needy. Along with those works, Fundraising and social activities have been Dandenong North's North Branch's main strengths, hosting many social events for members and families throughout the years, including movie and casserole nights among others. Fundraising occurs through the frequent bunny sausage sizzles, tax lotto competitions and the ever-expanding football tipping competition. Over the last few years, about $10,000 has been raised annually through these efforts, which has, been, which has allowed donations to St Vincent de Paul, Nazareth and St John's College's Religious Education Awards and other local and other missionary <coughs> charities. In 2003, the branch organised tools for Timor, where old hand tools were collected to send to East Timor to help them rebuild after the violence following their declaration of independence. The branch has also seen a significant, been a significant source of leadership within the parishes and the KSC in Victoria as a whole. Many branch members have led letter writing and stewardship campaigns over the years and have been heavily involved in many of the various parish committees. When Pope John Paul, the same Pope John Paul II visited Australia in 1986, it was Kevin Shanahan who organised the group from St Gerard's to attend masses at Flemington Racecourse and at the MCG. Over the last 30 years, <coughs> Daniel North Branch has provided a number of KSC state councillors, such as the late Manfred Link, who was Deputy State Chairman, the late Kevin Fitzgerald, who was State Secretary back in the 1980s, as well as that, uh, brother Kevin Fitzgerald would also become the national treasurer in the early 90s and was awarded the national honour, the highest national honour, the Knight of Merit, and was the last such surviving recipient from Victoria. And along with John Cullen and Michael O'Halloran also holding various state portfolios. The branch hit its zenith in leadership at the end of 2018, with the entirety of the state executive, <coughs> chairman, deputy chairman, <coughs> secretary and treasurer, made up of its own members, Carmen Miranda, uh, Michael Palmer, yours truly, and Joseph O'Brien, respectively. A fact about the current state executive is that they all have been the most recent secretaries of this branch. While Michael was, well, Brother Michael was also a former state chairman, Carmen and myself also hold the same respective positions in organising KC Victoria's flagship event, the KC Archbishop's Dinner, which raises an average $60,000 annually for the education of Victoria's seminarians who appreciate all our support as the order has today at the inter-seminary soccer tournament which was held here in Melbourne. <coughs> for all of the branch's efforts and activities, Daniel North Branch was named KSC Victoria's Branch of the Year in both 2012 and 2018. 
So that was the past and present. What about the future, you might ask? Many would say we don't have a future, given our ageing growth, demographics and declining numbers. Some might say we're still stuck in the past and can't adapt to the future. Others will ask if we still do anything. Well, we're not going anywhere. Indeed, our branch is never one to rest on its laurels and continues to seek new areas of participation and involvement. Indeed, we have probably become somewhat complacent over the years and have faced many challenges over those years which have hurt us in numerous ways. But hopefully they have made us wiser and eventually stronger. This past year has seen two new branches formed in the western suburbs with more planned throughout Melbourne in coming months. While our branch has been strong and undoubtedly the leader of the pack, we do not want to end up like other great branches reliving glory days. We must seek the engagement of all throughout the parishes with a particular eye to the youth. The KSC has been the vehicle for many men to grow in their faith and in their skills. You might wonder, what have I got to contribute and whether you'd be able to achieve anything? When I joined the KSC ten, in this very room 10 years ago this month, I, I wondered the same thing. I didn't know how long I'd last, if I'd get along with anyone, or if I could achieve anything. A decade on, I stand here as the State Secretary having grown in skill and in faith. You'd be surprised where God can lead you if you follow his path. Since we celebrated our last major milestone, our 50th anniversary, there are many members and families who have sadly left us to receive their eternal reward. Sadly, among those have been Dominic Tamburo, Martin De Conning, Ken Putz, Des Staines, John Hughes, Banford Link, Peter De Cinque, Kevin Fitzgerald, and most recently Kerry McDonald, whose funeral was yesterday. Some I didn't get to know, others became close friends. May we keep those men and those who went before them in our prayers. I also ask you to keep a KSC member formerly of our branch, Michael O'Halloran, in your prayers too, who is at present very ill. To conclude, I would like to acknowledge all the members who work tirelessly to ensure our charitable works continue. I would like to thank the wives and families who support and assist our branch when needed, and to the priests uh, who, support, who we support and who support us, thank you. You have had it all rough in recent times. Know that we have your back. And to all the parishioners who have supported our branch, um, branch activities over the years, such as attending this dinner tonight, thank you. Without everyone's support, we could not do what we do. God bless. Oh, sure.